good Wednesday morning. I apologize for yesterday. Um, <clears throat> we had some doctor's appointments yesterday morning and I didn't get into the office until noon and uh, I really wanted to put a little more effort into this video instead of rushing one for yesterday. So I apologize, but that being said, we've got uh, some, a lot to talk about this morning. I'm going to kind of continue our uh, joy through obedience uh, type measure and, uh, and conversation. So we're going to keep talking about all that. So grab your morning beverage. Uh, let's sit a spell and uh, take a little moment to, to rest in his word and see where we're going today. This morning we're going to be in the book of John. The tenth chapter, starting in the seventh verse. Um, I did use this as a scripture reference on Sunday, so some of it will sound kind of familiar. But we're uh, we're going to go in a little more detail, a little more depth. Um, so what's going on here is the, is the Pharisees have kind of tried to trap Jesus again, and he's gone through the whole uh, sheep shepherd conversation about how. Sheep know the voice of the shepherd, and they respond to the voice of the shepherd. And anyone who's not the shepherd, they don't respond, and they will turn away from that voice. So he says here in, in verse 7, he says, Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks and the flock, the, attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he has a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I'm going to keep going on to verse 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. I have another sheep that are not of this sheep pen, and I will also bring them. They too will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my Father. So this is John ten seven through um 18. So that's a, a little lengthy scripture, but it's very, very important. Uh, yeah, this is an analogy, and it's it's metaphorically speaking, but there's a lot that Christ is saying here. Jesus is saying that everyone that's come before him, while they've tended the flock, it's not been their flock. It's been, uh, it's been always been his flock. He's always been that shepherd, and everyone who's come before has just been hired hands as he says in, in the scripture and that's something we need to take into consideration we've allowed terms um, like sheep to become negative in our con connotations in our in our country in the last few years um, but Jesus calls us sheep and he calls us sheep for a reason sheep have to be led sheep need a leader uh, where cattle are driven sheep are led and it says and Jesus says that sheep only respond to the voice of their master there's a very interesting line, and I pointed it out in my sermon on Sunday. And Jesus says here in um, verse 16, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen, and I must bring them also. They will be one flock. They will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. So Jesus is already telling them that the, the Jewish people are not going to be the only ones that respond to his call. And he's making a way here for the Gentile, for the Gentile salvation. Uh, even in John, well before you know Peter has the dream. So it's important to know that we, we aren't an afterthought as, as Gentiles. And you aren't an afterthought now in, in 2020. You know, Christ made a way for you in John, just the same way he was making a way for the, for the Gentiles that would come uh, as well. So remember that. You're, you're chosen. You're a chosen sheep. You need to respond to the shepherd. We talked the other day how the joy of the Lord is our strength. And and through that joy, we've learned that obedience comes from there. That. And that's what that this is talking about. Jesus says, I'm going to die for my sheep. And we know that the God-man did die and was resurrected. And Jesus lives eternally as part of the Trinity. No other shepherd or sheepdog, as some of these people try to refer themselves to, 
is going to stand in front of the wolf and die for you. So take that, take your obedience, take comfort in knowing that the shepherd is always on watch. I think that's something we're not, we, don't, we don't take into consideration that um, the, shepherd's, the shepherd's not going to sleep. He's constantly, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, taking care of his sheep, looking after them, anointing their heads with oil. It's very important to understand that the shepherd is always there. Take time in prayer. Reach out to the shepherd. That's what I want you to do today. Joy and obedience for today is prayer. I want you to take time, make time for deliberate prayer. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Understand that everything good in life comes from God. And every trial and temptation is a, is a way of testing and, and your reliance on the shepherd. Never forget that the shepherd's watching and wanting you to follow. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for being that ever-present shepherd, that presence that is going to, to lead, guide, and keep, keep a watch over us, even when we, we don't feel like we need guidance and, and watching over. You're constantly protecting us from things that, that are not seen, and we thank you for that protection. Lord, we ask that as we go through this holiday season that, that you, you let your presence be felt. That we know that we are in the presence of the shepherd and that all is being taken care of. We love you and we thank you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. It is Wednesday. We're making a little tweak of our drive through prayer. We're going to go from 4.30 to 5.30, so it's still daylight. Uh, so if you want to come out and pray with us, please come out. Uh, if you want to come out and pray for folks with us, also please come out. So have a great and terrific Wednesday. Uh, we are halfway through the week. Remember, you are greatly blessed and highly favored.